Today we're going to be completely transforming my gaming and streaming room. If you've seen any of my past content, you know I put a lot of time into my room, specifically my setup. And with that, I have always shared a room with my older brother up until a few weeks ago when he moved out, which means I finally have my own room and it's time to make some changes. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the way my room and setup looks, but there's always been one thing that I can't stand, and that's my bunk bed. It doesn't match, it takes up so much space, and now that I'm the only one in this room, there's no point for a bunk bed. So the plan is I'm going to replace my bunk bed with a floating bed or a platform bed. If you have no idea what a floating bed is, it's made up of two parts with the base being smaller than the size of the mattress on top. And what a lot of people do is they take RGB lights and put it under the top layer, shining down, giving that glow and floating effect with the base being smaller than the top portion. It's really not that complicated, but in my case, I'm gonna be building it a little bit differently since we're building into a corner. And I think it's gonna make a great replacement coming from a bunk bed. Now that we know what the bunk bed is going to be replaced with, it's time to get to work. The first thing we had to do was remove the bunk bed. And the bunk bed is made up of two sections, the top section and the bottom section, and they're both connected together. So the first thing that we had to do was take off the top section, starting with the mattress, then the piece of plywood, then I had my brother and dad help me out. We lifted it off, took it down, disassembled it and repeated the same process for the bottom section. Except with the bottom section, we had to remove the drawers, take those out, then completely disassemble it. And once we had everything out of the room, I could now visualize how this floating bed was going to look. A few months prior, I had mentioned this idea to my dad that once my brother had moved out, I wanted to make a floating bed. He thought it was a great concept. And now that we actually had time to do it, my dad and I really worked together and he ended up sketching up the complete design for this floating bed. Since my bed could really only fit in one place in my room, considering that my setup takes up a good chunk, we had to build this into the corner. Instead of the normal way most floating beds were built, this one was gonna look a little bit different with it being mostly screwed into the studs of the wall and only having one leg support it. Once my dad had completely finished the whole sketch up, we had all the designs, dimensions, all the parts, lumber, everything we needed, we headed over to Home Depot and started picking up all the parts. I'll throw up on the screen all the lumber, screws, and bolts we used, but we ended up picking up four two by sixes, four two by fours, some construction screws, and some carriage bolts. All this ended up totaling out to be $86.26, and you may be wondering why we didn't pick up plywood. One, it was too expensive, and two, we're just gonna reuse the plywood that was on the bunk bed with the floating bed, saving me a lot of money. Thanks to my dad and the very detailed sketch up that he made, it was super easy. All we had to do was simply look at the designs and dimensions and measurements for everything, make sure that we cut the four two by sixes and the four two by fours to the exact length they needed to be, and we just simply had to put the puzzle together. We essentially made a box of two by sixes and we used two by fours to fill in the gaps. We also used a two by four, ripped it in half and used it to support the plywood that is going to be on top of the frame. With the frame out of the way, the next step was to make sure the bed fit perfectly in my room. So we took it upstairs, dry fitted it, screwed it into the studs, but we ran into a little bit of an issue. The outlets were exactly where we wanted the height of the bed to go. And I'm, this is something that I'm still surprised that we never thought about, but it's just something we had to get to when we brought it upstairs to dry fit it. So this is what we did to fix that. I had already bought a power strip and I was planning on mounting that to one of the two by fours so I could have more outlets in case I wanted to add more RGB or something else that I needed to plug in. So we really only needed one outlet available. What we did to fix this is my dad marked out both of the outlets and made sure that there was enough clearance so that I would have enough room to plug in that power strip with that one outlet that we needed. Once we had screwed the frame into the wall, bolted the leg, make sure everything was right, we made some final adjustments, disassembled it and brought it back downstairs. The next day we got started again, my dad routed out where the outlet plate was and where the bed was going to sit. So he routed up enough space so that when we push the bed against the wall, it wouldn't smash into the outlet plate. There was gonna be enough room. So we routed that out perfectly and everything ended up working out with the outlet situation. Once that was done, we took some wood putty and we filled in all these screws and any gaps and anything that was damaged with some wood putty to clean things up. And we only had to do two sides since there was only two sides being shown. 
while that dried quickly we just had to wait overnight so that next day i got up and i got started sanding the whole entire frame i worked my way up from 60 grit to 80 grit to 120 to 200 to 220 and after that the frame was super smooth i sanded out all the wood putty which made it flush so that it didn't even look like there were screws and once that was done i took it outside and got started painting i was debating between painting it a darker color or a lighter color and after some thought i ended up just painting it white i felt like it would make the bed pop more and it would match the three walls in my room as well as my setup as a whole. It took about two coats of paint and since it was hot the day I painted it, it only took a few hours for the first coat to dry and all I had to do was put on a second coat within a few hours, wait overnight, and we were almost done. The next day when my dad had time, we brought it all back upstairs, screwed the frame into the wall, bolted the leg and put the piece of plywood on and we were pretty much done, but it was time to add the finishing touch. I picked up a power strip and some RGB lights to give that underglow and the floating effect. And once I had mounted the power strip how I wanted it to be, I started laying all the RGB strips under the bed. It was 32 feet, which ended up being perfectly because I could go around the whole entire frame and the center of the frame back and forth. And I think it was plenty of RGB to definitely give that floating effect. Another thing is I also drilled out a big hole in the piece of plywood to feed the cable for my Govi Glide down as well as some any other cables that I wanted to feed or if I wanted to add in anything in the future, I wanted to make sure there was room for cables to go up in the bed from the power strip being under the piece of plywood. I did a little bit of cable management and everything actually turned out really well and I'm really happy with the glow effect that the lights give off considering the fact that this is built into a corner and it's not what a typical floating bed would look like. With everything pretty much done, all I had to do was throw my mattress on, make my bed, and here is the final result. Here are some few things that I'd like to share with you guys if you'd like to build one yourself. First off, a floating bed is actually a really simple concept and depending on how your room is laid out, you could go with a much simpler design with simply stacking wood pallets and then a mattress frame, putting your mattress on and you essentially have a floating bed. If you do have a similar room situation where you had to build it into the corner, I really do think this is the best option with using these studs to your advantage and only having to use one leg. A lot of people think that the one leg looks ugly and what's the point of it? And really the point of having one leg is to support the corner where people would mostly sit. If you just used it without that leg, it would be sagging a lot and it would eventually probably pull out of the wall if you put too much weight or you jumped on that edge. So just having that leg just gave it the extra support that it needed. Another thing too, is we didn't end up using all the lumber that we had originally bought. We had leftover one two by four and one two by six and didn't end up using the construction screws because my dad forgot that he already had some. So that saved up a good chunk of money. I'm planning on returning those, but the previous original total being $86.26 is definitely knocked down considering that we didn't need all the lumber and we over prepared a little bit. All in all, I'm super happy with how everything turned out and coming from a bunk bed to a floating bed, this is a huge upgrade. Not only does it look and feel better, but it matches my room. One last thing I forgot to mention earlier in the video, if you'd like to see the exact sketchup that my dad created, head over to the description, click on my Discord and go over to the channel. I don't know when I'm gonna name it yet, but you'll see it. It'll probably be under stream designs or designs head over to that channel. I'll post the PDF of the SketchUp that we used so that you can view it if you want to build it exactly how we did. With that, if you did go on to enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe down below with the post notifications on so you never miss a future upload. Thank you again for watching this video. I will see you guys in the next one.